Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. It's going to do a little more test support and help for the ASVAB military placement exam. Specifically today, I'm just going to look at the auto information portion of the test. This is just a practice test to see if you kind of know what's going on. These tests are really kind of seeing how often you spend time in a shop or an auto shop. I am by no means a mechanic. I do a little bit of wrenching and I do like the way cars work. Um, I teach high school woodshop and math, and it's a practical math channel. I'm just doing a short video on auto information for the ASVAB, maybe exposure to some of this stuff. We'll kind of click a few things, so when you take the test, you'll do a little bit better. Answer the questions before I do, and then see how I answer them. And here we go. Let's get started. All right, auto information number one. How often should the oil be changed? Every one month or 1,000 miles? Every five months or 5,000 miles? According to the manufacturer's recommendation, that has to be it right there. Always what the manual says, especially in the military. So it's going to be answer C, manufacturer's recommendation. That is a good answer. The mass airflow sensor does what? It measures pounds per square inch of compression of the cylinders. Well, even if you don't know what a mass airflow sensor is, you kind of figure it out from there. It's measuring the amount of air going by. This is not the amount of air going by, that's inside the cylinder. Measure the amount of air going into the engine, that has to be it, right? It's measuring the flow of air, the mass of air, so that's the correct answer. Measures the speed of the vehicle, that doesn't even make sense. Measures the amount of air going out of the exhaust, um, that doesn't really make too much sense either. Why would you even measure that? Number three, the harmonic balancer is a part of the same thing. If you don't know what that thing is, you could kind of kind of makes sense, right? A harmonic balance, you're trying to balance something that's going to be vibrating around. Uh, differential, it's not really going to be vibrating around. Radiator won't be, radiator won't be, transmission won't be. So the only one that makes sense is the engine. Number four, which of the following is part of the transmission? Intake valve doesn't make sense. That's on the engine itself. Valve body and intake valve are both in the same area. The flywheel, that's a possibility, but the flywheel is the end of the engine. It engages the clutch plate, and the clutch plate engages the transmission. So number four would be the clutch plate. Number five, where can you find a dampener spring? Same thing. If you don't know what that is, you go through the answers and see if they make sense. It have nothing to do with the exhaust. Um, part of the muffler, that doesn't make sense e either. In the water pump, why would you want to dampen a water pump? Part of a strut, a strut actually is a suspension, so when you bounce, that's what you'd want to dampen down. So the only thing that makes sense right there is part D. You know, if you're a mechanic, obviously you're just snapping right through here, but you're probably not watching this video. But if you want to score extra few more points, learning a few of these words probably help you a little bit on the ASVAB. In automotive electronics, red wires typically indicate, well, that's kind of all electrical. Red just is a color of hot, so that's always going to be positive current. Uh, negative, it's usually black, grounded, green, high voltage, that doesn't make any sense. So your answer is answer A. Number seven, ed engine coolant is typically made from propylene glycol, which advantage does that have over water? It's orange so you can see leaks better. I don't know if you, I've ever seen leaks this look wet. It prevents corrosion, that's absolutely true. It lubricates the radiator. I don't know why the radiator would need lubrication. That doesn't make any sense. It is thicker than water. That's probably too, true too. But the reason it's there is it prevents corrosion, answer B. Number eight, directional tires. Um, if I have tires like this on the car and they're only designed to go one way, my directional tires can only be rotated how? Well, if I flip them over, they're going the opposite way. So they could only be move this way, so they can't be rotated, they could be side to side, won't work, front to back, across, that doesn't make sense, front to back, same side, answer D, that's the only one that makes sense there. How are lug nuts used to hold the axle to the wheel, to hold the rim to the hub, to hold the axle in the transmission, to hold the brake in the hub, answer B is the only one that makes sense, it's designed to hold the rim onto the hub so the wheel doesn't come off. If you're not a mechanic and you don't quite know what these things mean, you can still figure some of these out. A compression ratio is a measurement. Well, it's, it's compressing something, right? So where is it going to get compressed? It'll be in the engine, and it's a ratio. So the difference in volume between the piston up and down, that makes a lot of sense. 
amount of air, different size tire, that doesn't make any sense. Difference between the engine and compression and high and low RPM, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, this and this are the same. None of these really make any sense. So 10 has to be answer A. Uh, this is the last one here, number 11. Again, this is just a practice test, just to kind of get your head around what the test is going to look like. Uh, and this is kind of shop, auto shop knowledge. Number 11, the evaporator is found in, well, the way you um, cool, it has to have something to do with the cooling system, not of the engine, but of the air. So cooling system is a, you know, it's kind of a distractor, emission system, electrical systems, none of those. Air conditioning sen uh, system is the correct answer, answer D. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I'll try to get them as quick as I can. Again, I am no auto mechanic. I do work on my cars, but I'm kind of showing you on a practice ASVAB auto portion of the test that you can figure a lot of these out just with some common reasoning. So thank you for watching. Think about subscribing if you like this channel. And uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments.